We just got a new book. We just got a new book. We just got a new book. <laughs> I just kidding with y'all. If you know that song, then you're a 90s baby. Anyway, peace and love, beautiful people. It's your girl, Shaka Khan, and welcome to Orange Moon Divination. If you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome. And if you are returning, how are you, my beautiful Orange Moon Pies? Don't forget to subscribe and like. I definitely want to add this to my many future videos of bringing books and articles and even other YouTubers to my channel so anyone who's you know a subscriber a viewer who's just getting started like kind of like I am even though I've been dabbling in tarot for a, a few years now like six years I think no that's not that long three years definitely wasn't that long I've been non-dominational for six years but dabbling in tarot for three but anyway let's bring our awareness to this amazing book written by Monique Joyner Seedlock connecting with your ancestors so if you haven't or you don't acknowledge your ancestors and your spiritual spiritual person like I am or you don't know how to grab a book this is a great one it's very short it's about 30 something pages and you can get it on Amazon I'll take that as confirmation go to Amazon and throw some of these books in your cart the next time you're making a purchase for whatever all right I'm gonna read the introduction it says throughout history various forms of ancestral communication have been vital, integral parts of many great cultures and religions. Wherever you may be from, chances are your ancestors practiced some form of ancestral communication. From the Gaelic Celts who celebrate Samhain to the Mexican Dia de Muertes, forms of ancestor worship have massively influenced modern culture. Ancestral communication can be traced back to mankind's earliest people because as long as there has been the concept of an afterlife, we have prayed to those sent there. Nearly every great culture had some form of ancestral communication. The ancient Greeks would create small shrines in their homes to honor the dead. Ancient Chinese emperors would hold massive festivals to worship their ancestors. Also, every pre-Columbian civilization in the Americas practiced worshiping and presenting offerings to their dead. Of course, you may ask, but all of those cultures are long gone. Why do we not practice ancestral communication anymore? Well, you'll be happy to know many modern cultures do still practice ancestral communication in one form or another. Anyone familiar with Catholicism and Angelicanism, Angelicanism or Eastern Orthodoxy may know of All Saints Day and All Souls Day, which in the Western Church are observed every November 1st and 2nd, respectively, right after Halloween. In Korea, they practice a few ceremonies called Jisa, J-E-S-A, Typically, these ceremonies are performed on the anniversary of an ancestor's death. In addition to services performed on a specific anniversary, there are also ancestral rites held on the 10th lunar month and tea ceremonies held four times a year on significant anniversaries. It is safe to say that Korean ancestors get a lot of love. Aside from established religion, most of us have performed some kind of ancestral worship before. It may have been visiting the grave of a deceased family member and placing some flowers for them or having a row of pictures on your mantelpiece. Regardless of how you decide to honor your ancestors, they are there and they appreciate it. Even if you don't have graves to visit or pictures to place, there are endless of other ways in which you can celebrate and honor your ancestors. As, these, as this book continues, we will examine them one by one. So that's pretty dope um, to learn that other, about other cultures who also um, 
visit or talk to or hold their uh, past ones in high regard, their passed over loved ones in high regard who believe that they they visit us or um, protect us. I always thought that was um, beautiful. I actually went to see a reader. Um, I don't think she was real though. I just did it on a whim. It was kind of like you're there and you just want to see what someone says. And she had mentioned someone who had passed away who was fiercely protective of me, but I couldn't think of who she was talking about. Because I think she even said recently, someone recently passed away. And I'm like, nobody recently that was close to me passed away that I could think of, which is good. So I don't know. But it's always nice to hear that, you know, <laughs> that someone um, who's not here physically is here with me on the spiritual plane. And whoever this person is, if they are actually, you know, who she says they are, um, I feel it. I definitely feel fiercely protected by the ones who came before me. Anyway, so we have chapter one. Who are our ancestors? Our ancestors are those who came before not just your great-grandparents, but also their great-grandparents, and so on. It's your entire bloodline, from the first of your family name up to your recent relatives. Our ancestors are who we have to thank for us being here. Without them fighting for survival over the centuries, we would never have existed. For that, I think the ancestors of every person deserve some well-earned respect and admiration. And I second that motion. So thank you to my ancestors who are here, the ones who are fighting for me, the ones who are sitting back and watching, the ones who are putting in the work behind the scenes and keeping us safe. Uh, this is for each and every one of us. Remember to rise in the, um, in, uh, when you get up in the morning and upon rising, if you're thanking God, thank your ancestors as well. If you're, you know, saying a prayer, say a prayer for them too. Because they're there, they're watching over you, whether you believe it or not. Every time I think of my ancestors, I think of that movie, um, Mulan. And, you know, she went to the temple and she was, they were, they were discussing how they were going to help her. And I feel like that's how a lot of our ancestors gather around. They're like, oh, how are we going to help this one? How are we going to do this? You know, what can they, um, manipulate or, or push in our favor or take away from us that we don't need so it's very important to stay in tune and stay connected with our ancestors or even just learn who they are learn their names because remember it's not just the ones who have recently passed but their grandparents great 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 <laughs> okay all the way to the beginning of your family line you'll be surprised if you start to trace your history back how far it goes back or where it started some of us are from parts of Africa, but a lot of us, especially in America, the black Americans, they don't realize that their ancestors were never anywhere else. They were always here on this land. They were part of the Gullah Geechee tribes or the Navajo tribes or let me see if I can find any more. I live in um, the New England area, so tribes in New England. You could be a Pequot or a Pequonic um, or Pinacook, I think they call themselves. You could be a, a Mohegan if you're from this area and you didn't even realize. So there were a lot of, excuse me, there are a lot of uh, aboriginals that, that all over this country before it was colonized. And that melanin is what connects you on such a spiritual level, not just to the earth, but to the ones that came before you. And once you realize that your history was purposely, purposely taken from you or, or, or shifted or changed, renamed, relabeled, rebranded, you'll start to understand why the importance, the absolute importance of honoring and connecting with those who came before you. So long story short, Grab one of you, grab one of these books, 
grab one of you. Grab one of these books from Amazon. We have Monique Joyner C Block and plenty of other authors that go into detail of how to connect with your ancestors. Find the book that vibes with you and take it from there. I hope you have the great rest of your day. Peace.